This is Mac OS Ken. The chips are still down. Australia has CSAM questions. And Apple's head of privacy sings happy trails. It is Wednesday, the 31st of August, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp dot com slash mac os can this show is also supported by people like you patrons through patreon find out more and add your support at patreon dot com slash mac os can just when you were starting to feel good about how things were going in the supply chain along come executives from the supply chain Bloomberg ran a sort of depressing piece on Tuesday. It had C.C. Wei, CEO of TSMC, saying things are still kind of messed up. According to the report, the world's largest contract chip maker can no longer meet demand for low-end chips at legacy factories, and it is building new plants, Wei said, suggesting that even mature chips may cost more in the months ahead. The exec indicated that the production of $50,000 cars is being held up by chips that cost 50 cents. While the chips themselves are in short supply, their need continues to grow. Quoting Bloomberg again, Shortages are showing up as a result of automakers adding more features to cars and increasing the silicon used by 15% every year while smartphones now require two to three times the number of power management chips they did five years ago, according to the CEO. Australia has an interesting, though vague, demand of Microsoft, Meta, and Apple. Tell us what you're doing about stopping the spread of child sexual abuse material, or CSAM. Highlighting a Reuters report, Apple Insider says Australia's e-safety commissioner has sent what are described as legal letters to Apple and other big tech platforms, demanding information about strategies to detect and also to remove CSAM. It's unclear how much detail they want, but they want it within four weeks. And if they don't get it, the Australian regulator is prepared to charge each company $383,000 presumably Australian, each day until they get the info. Of course, we do have some idea of what Apple could do. Apple Insider reminds readers Apple famously announced measures to prevent the spread of CSAM in August of last year, only to face criticism over security and censorship. Apple backpedaled its plans in September of last year, but, as Apple Insider has noted, the addition of such measures is now inevitable. No comment from Apple on the Australian demand, according to Apple Insider. Meta says it's looking into the letter. Microsoft says it will respond within the 28-day window, according to the report. On the privacy and security tip, Jane Horvath either has left or is leaving the big round building. Bloomberg says Apple's chief privacy officer is taking a job at Gibson, Dunn & Crutcher, LLP. U.S. News says that firm is a leading international law firm that consistently ranks among the world's top law firms in industry surveys and major publications. The firm is distinctively positioned in today's global marketplace, says the piece, with more than 1,600 lawyers and 20 offices. Meanwhile, a piece from Law.com listed the firm as the 15th highest-grossing law firm in the world in 2021. As Apple's departing chief privacy officer, Horvath leaves a pretty sizable void. Bloomberg points out that she has been the company's face in promoting its safeguards alongside chief executive officer Tim Cook. Quoting that report, Privacy has become central to Apple's marketing efforts, and Horvath represented the company in its dealings with trade groups and Capitol Hill. She was also responsible for Apple's compliance with privacy rules globally, such as GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation, in the European Union. While parting is such sweet sorrow, there is a decent chance that she and Apple will cross paths again, The firm she's joining has represented Apple before and not that long ago. 
Gibson Dunn most recently led Apple's legal efforts in its fight against Epic Games over App Store commissions, according to the Bloomberg piece. More good deeds from Cupertino Way. Apple is expanding resources for educators. 9 to 5 Mac ran a piece earlier this week announcing the creation of a new education community hub. Apple's landing page describes that as a professional learning hub designed for educators who use Apple technology. Building on resources in Apple Teacher, the new hub includes a forum meant to serve as the community's collaborative space for educators to connect. It also features posts about educators and participating regions using Apple tools. The program is currently in beta and currently only available in English. While no specific login or educator credentials are required, the piece says only educators from the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand can create profiles to post content in the forum. News of another medical study from Apple. The Mac Observer says the Cupertino company is taking part in a stroke prevention study looking into whether Apple Watch could be used to help minimize the use of blood thinners. The report lists two problems associated with blood thinners. They're expensive, and they thin the blood. I know, they're supposed to. However, the piece says, excessive use of this type of medication can lead to dangerously excessive bleeding. Citing a report from the website Stat News, TMO says the study will compare strokes, bleeding, and health care outcomes among people who are given the standard course of blood thinners, Another group will be directed to take medication only after an Apple Watch detects prolonged atrial fibrillation. Lots of time, lots of partners, and a decent amount of money behind this study. According to the report, the seven-year program managed to secure $37 million in funding from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, Other partners include the American Heart Association, Johns Hopkins University, Stanford, and UC San Francisco. The study is expected to begin next spring. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. There are so many ways that counseling does not work. If you get the wrong counselor doesn't work. If you're not ready to fix whatever problem is troubling you, doesn't work. If you are ready, though, there's better help. A therapist doesn't fix everything. Rather, they help you find your own solutions. That's why you have to be ready. What's great about better help, it's ready when you are. They've got hundreds of counselors ready to match within 48 hours. Sessions happen on the phone, the laptop, the tablet. You're not bound by who's around you, and you work together however's most comfortable. I like that. I like how easy BetterHelp makes it to find a therapist, and I like how easy BetterHelp makes it to change should you find your counselor is not the right fit. I had that happen once with better help. Could have quit, tried again instead, and ended up with a much better counselor for me. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash macOSCan today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash macOSCan. Betterhelp dot com slash macOSCan. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. Fun with Numbers, Without Numbers, the podcast edition. Apple Insider ran a piece this week that had an Apple spokesperson telling Digiday that when it comes to podcasts, the number of subscribers had gone up by more than 300% since June of last year. Okay, 300% is a number. We don't have a starting point, though. Still, it is notable that 300% represents paid podcast listeners. In Apple Podcast parlance, subscribers, or people who pay, 
unpaid podcast listeners are called followers. Come to this house, be one of us. News of a couple of series renewals for Apple TV+. Plus. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release this week announcing the return of Acapulco, and it is returning fairly soon. In case you've forgotten, the bilingual coming-of-age comedy tells the story of 20-something Maximo Gallardo, whose dream comes true when he scores the job of a lifetime as a cabana boy at the hottest resort in Acapulco. The show is told in flashback... Season 2 picks up where Season 1 left off. Enrique Arazón returns as the young Maximo, while executive producer Eugenio Derbez returns as the modern-day Maximo. The second season's first two episodes hit Friday, the 21st of October. The rest will hit one a week following Fridays through the season's 10-episode run. Farther on the horizon, another Apple comedy gets to try, try again. And again and again. A piece from Apple Insider says the British sitcom Trying has been picked up for a fourth season. The news comes just ahead of season three's finale. That hits Apple TV Plus this Friday, the 2nd of September. About all we get from Apple's announcement is that the show will be back. No plot points, no production details, and no premiere date for season four, according to Apple Insider. And finally today, it is Tom Hanks' world, and we're all just playing games in it. Or will be this Friday when a game created by the Academy Award-winning actor hits Apple Arcade. Engadget says the game Hanks 101 Trivia, that's H-A-N-X, Hanks 101 Trivia is the actor-slash-entrepreneur's first game, though not his first app. Nearly a decade ago, the piece says he released Hank's Writer, a typewriter-themed writing app that became a hit on iPad. As for the game, Engadget says Hank's 101 Trivia will feature questions in several categories, including history, math, geography, and food. You can try to beat your high score or face off against other players in head-to-head bouts and team matchups. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time I touched Tom Hanks? Don't worry. It wasn't as creepy as it sounds. Though I fear from his perspective it might have been... Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash... Mac OS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.